Welcome to the Madison Miller Podcast. Today is Thursday, October 22nd, 2020. Today I'm going to recap game number two of the World Series. And the World Series is actually off today, so I'll um, be going through you game number three until tomorrow. NFL game tonight between the Giants and the Eagles. College football game tonight in the Sun Belt. A college basketball coach resigns. Weeks before the season, the Pelicans hire a coach. My NBA power rankings and where things stand right now, and I'm actually going to do off-season predictions as I go through the power rankings and my best bet of the day. All right, we'll start with the World Series. Game number two, the Rays over the Dodgers, 6-4 to four, to even this thing up at one apiece. Getting the win for Tampa Bay was Nick Anderson, Tony Gonsol in the loss, Diego Castillo the save. Top of the first home run, Brandon Lau, 1-0 raise. Top of the fourth, two-run double, Joey Wendell, 3-0 raise. Top of the fifth, two-run shot, Brandon Lau again, 5-0 raise. Bottom of the fifth, two-run shot, Chris Taylor, 5-2. Top of the six sack fly, Joey Wendell, 6-2. Bottom of the six home run, Will Smith, 6-3. Bottom of the eighth, Corey Seager, home run, 6-4. The Dodgers had a chance to tie it in the bottom of the eighth. They had the uh, tying run at the plate, but uh, the race got out of it. Blake's now four and two-thirds, two hits, two runs, four walks, nine strikeouts. Nick Anderson went an inning in the third. He gave up the homer to Will Smith. Peter Fairbanks went an inning in two thirds. He gave up the homer to Corey Seager. Aaron Loop went one. He was brilliant. And Diego Castillo got the last out of the game for Tampa Bay. Tony Gonsolin, an inning in a third, a hit and a run, a walk, a strikeout. Dylan Flora went an inning in a third. Vince Gonzalez went one. Dustin May went an inning in a third. He has been shaky these last couple appearances for him, both. Last night and in Game 7 against the Braves, Joe Kelly went 1, Alex Wood went 2, and Jake McGee went 1. So, no Kenley Jansen yet. And I think the Dodgers have to get some big outs from Kenley Jansen and Blake Trine at some point in this series. Or else I don't see them perhaps winning this series. Next up, we'll preview some football for tonight. Um, NFC East game between the Giants and the Eagles. Giants are 1-5, and five, Eagles 1-4-1, one, and one, so the teams are combined 2-9-1. and one. Joe Buck, Troy Aikman, Aaron Andrews on the call. Um, the Eagles are favored by 4.5. I would make the Eagles a favorite by... Six and a half, and I would make the total 47 and a half. The total in this game is 45. So I'm two and a half off on the total, and I am two off on the number. In terms of a pick, I like the Eagles laying the points. Um, I think that this is a letdown spot for the Giants after getting their first win. I think the Eagles are getting healthy. Lane Johnson back, Deshaun Jackson back. So I think that Deshaun Jackson, who's been a Giants killer for life, will have a big game in his return. This is a game that the Eagles absolutely have to have. I think it's a disaster if the Eagles lose this game. Um, They're way better than the Giants. Um, So... Give me Philadelphia minus four and a half. I take a stab at the over as well. I think that um, Philadelphia will win this game by a score of 27-20. Let's say a weird score, like 27-21. And the 21 is because there's a couple field goals and maybe a missed extra point or something. 27-21, 27-20, 
Let's go with 27-21. Let's get weird here. Eagles win 27-21. They get the cover and the over hits for the game. Okay, now college football. Um, we have a Sun Belt game tonight between Arkansas State and Appalachian State. Appalachian State we've barely seen this year. They were the preseason favorites in the Sun Belt. And Arkansas State, in my mind, is underachieved this year. Appalachian State tonight is giving 13.5, total 68.5. I project Appalachian State 4.5. Total 59. So I have a big edge on Arkansas State and the big edge on the under. I'm going to take the under for the play. I have a bigger edge on the under than Arkansas State. Nine-point edge on Arkansas State, but a nine-and-a-half-point edge on the under. Um, Arkansas State bit me in the ass when I took them against close to Carolina. And I could see a world for this game. App State wins, let's say... 35 to 30, and that would mean Arkansas State covers, and it's an under. So, give me under 68 and a half, and I'm going to take a stab at Arkansas State to cover the point spread as well. So, there, it's a game, like in the football game, that I like. Both the side and the total. Now I want to get into some college basketball news. Um, Pat Chambers resigned from Penn State yesterday. Um, because of the um, allegations that he was dealing with, this really shouldn't be that big of a surprise for um, Penn State and for um, college basketball. Um, The news came down around in the 5 o'clock hour yesterday. Penn State, by the way, um, really wasn't that great under Pat Chambers. They were one of the teams that were one of the big losers last year of uh, coronavirus due to... um, or last season due to the coronavirus because they overachieved last year and almost made uh, the tournament. And the investigation was an inappropriate conduct that stemmed a former player saying that Chambers made a reference to a noose around the player's neck. So... Um, him resigning should be no surprise whatsoever. Um, the intern coach for Penn State this season um, will be one of the assistants from his staff. And um, I'm trying to blank and blank it on. Oh, Jim Ferry will be Penn State's intern head coach. There it is. He used to be the head coach at LIU and Duquesne. So at least Ferry has some experience. But the pressure's on. You're in the Big Ten. Um, it's unfortunate of a situation because this team would have been in the tournament last season had not been for COVID and now the pressure's on them to make the NCAA tournament. There's so many teams this year in college basketball where the pressure was on them to make the tournament because they wouldn't made it in twenty twenty, but the tournament got canceled as a whole due to the COVID. So Penn State is one of those teams. And I think Jim Ferry will probably be there the whole year and then depending on how they do, maybe he keeps the job or maybe Penn State 
goes big name hunting for its next head coach. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens. And speaking of coaches, Stan Van Gundy has been hired to be the head coach of the New Orleans Pelicans. To me, this comes to a surprise. Um, here there are some rumblings about Stan getting back in the league. There's rumors about him going to the Pacers. There's rumors about him talking to the Pelicans. But I thought for sure that they were going to hire Mike D'Antoni. Um, I think D'Antoni would be a great fit with the Pelicans because I think his system would really would have fit Zion Williamson. I'm not saying that Stan Van Gundy is a bad hire. I just think that Mike D'Antoni would have been a better fit. Stan Van Gundy is going to get them to play defense. Um, obviously, he took the Magic to the NBA Finals back in 2009. He coached Dwayne Wade and Shaq on the Heat, and then um, he got fired midway through the year, and then Pat Riley had to take over. Um, his Detroit tenure was a failure, but... Um, I still think he was a good coach and he had a raw deal in Detroit because the Pistons are the Pistons and the Pistons are a bad franchise. So that can't be all pinned on Stan Van Gundy. Although the problem that Stan in Detroit was that he was also the um, the GM, which hurt them and hurt his uh, Detroit tenure. But I don't think he'll have that dual role with the Pelicans like he did with the Pistons, and the only successful coach that has the dual role is Greg Popovich. But then again, it hasn't worked out over the last few years since they traded away Kawhi, and they've been mediocre since Kawhi left. So um, at least Popovich has the rings to back it up. But the good news for Stan is that he doesn't have to be the GM, too. He could just coach and... He has a good opportunity here to get um, that reputation he had back when he was this respected head coach that took the Orlando Magic to the NBA Finals rather than the failure he was with the Pistons. But that was because the Pistons hired him to do a dual role and they wanted a big name in there. And Stan made some mistakes in the train. He knows that. So they steal Stan Van Gundy from TNT. And now somebody's going to be getting promoted to TNT to replace him as like this, um, the number two or number three analyst there. And the irony is that Jeff Van Gundy is in play for the Rockets head coaching job, but I don't think he's going to get the job. I think John Lucas will because of his strong relationship with James Harden. So, one Van Gundy back in the league. Now we'll see if the other Van Gundy will be back in the coaching circle, or I should say in the coaching business in the NBA. He's in the coaching circle in the sense of his name's rumored, but does he officially get back in the coaching? I'm going to say no. I think he spends another year... Um, with Mike Breen and Mark Jackson, with ESPN, ABC. And then the Thunder have an opening. Is that who Mike D'Antoni goes to? I don't think so. I think that that's a rebuilding team. And they think that last year was a fluke. And you'll see in my predictions about um, the Thunder in a couple of minutes here. I think that the Thunder are a team that is not trying to win. And that's why I'd be surprised if Mike D'Antoni went there. So um, I guess Mike D'Antoni's going to take the year off and then see what jobs open up next year, which um, would be hard to speculate right now. But you never know um, because there are so many jobs open this off season to the point where um, you would have thought that D'Antoni would land somewhere, but no, he's going to take the year off in all likelihood. And now I'm going to do my NBA power rankings as um, we enter the offseason. 
Um, I'm going to go from 30 to 1. And I'm going to reveal my bold prediction for every team during the off season. And some of these were hard to make. And some of these were fun to make. All right, number 30, the Charlotte Hornets. My bold prediction for them is that they draft James Weissman at 3. A lot of people think that they're going to move up to take Weissman. Maybe it depends on... um, what some of these other teams do. I think the draft's going to be chaos. Um, so I guess um, Weissman will be their pick. But to me, the question is at three, do they move up the one to get him or two? But I think that would be pointless, especially if um, Minnesota takes, so let's say Minnesota goes with Anthony Edwards, Golden State trades the pick to a team, and that team takes the mellow ball. And then um, Weissman sitting there at three. So I'm going to say for the Hornets, they draft James Weissman at three. Number 29, the New York Knicks. Um, The bottom two teams are easily the two worst teams, and you could argue the team at 28 is in the conversation for worst team as well. But to me, it's either the Hornets or the Knicks. Um... But I decided to go with Charlotte because at least the Knicks have R.J. Barrett on their roster, who I think will um, grow as a player and mature. My bold prediction for the Knicks is that they'll sign Isaiah Thomas. I'm going to say they take a flyer on him. Um, he showed some flashes last year. He really has never been the same since that injury with the Celtics. But the Knicks need something at the point guard position. And I think that... Um, so I'll take a flyer one-year deal with Isaiah Thomas. Number 28, the Detroit Pistons. This is another team you could argue for the worst team in the league, but to me it's Charlotte. Um, my bold prediction for the Detroit Pistons is that they trade Blake Griffin and the seventh pick to the Chicago Bulls for the fourth pick and... Otto Porter Jr. Um, I know this trade really doesn't make sense. Um, This is a trade that I think um, the Pistons might have to throw in one more piece in this deal to actually make it work. Maybe um, uh, Luke Kennard or one of their other um, young pieces are in this deal to move up or to move back so the Bulls get more for the fourth pick. So I would say the Pistons have to throw in one more piece, but I look at it as expiring, expiring for seven and four on each side. But I'm going to say the Pistons also throw in either a second-round pick or one of their younger role players in the deal to Chicago to make this work. And obviously, um, I just think the Bulls want a big name player in there, um, even though bad contract. Um, Blake's a veteran, and Blake in a big market, I think, would rejuvenate him. And I think the Bulls are trying to win next year, obviously, with the hire of Billy Donovan. Number 27 is the Cleveland Cavaliers. My prediction for them is that. They trade C.D. Osmond to the Spurs for Jakob Bertle. Um, I think that Tristan Thompson leaves as a free agent and tries to go ring hunting. Um, and C.D. Osmond's a good player. He just screams classic Spurs, and the Spurs, in my opinion, need help on the wing. And Osmond could start or come off the bench for them, and then. And then uh, Jakob Bertel, the Cavs can trot out as their starting center. And I think that's a fair trade straight up. I really do. And then the Spurs um, can try LaMarcus Aldridge at the five. Because I don't see, spoiler alert, I do not have LaMarcus Aldridge or DeMar DeRozan being traded. But maybe they try... Aldridge at the five or sign a center. Number 26, the Minnesota Timberwolves. 
my bold prediction for them is that they draft Anthony Edwards first overall. Um, there's a lot of rumors that they don't know what they're going to do. There's some rumors that they want to trade the pick for a veteran that can help them win now to pair with Carl Anthony Towns and D'Angelo Russell. But to me, the best thing to do is just take Edwards and hoping he pans out. I think he has star potential. Um, he's a good scoring guard. Um, and I think that Minnesota should just be patient and take him and see what happens. And if it, if Carl Anthony Towns is unhappy, then trade him and trade D'Angelo Russell and start a rebuild and build around Anthony Edwards. 25, the Washington Wizards. This is a big one, guys. The Wizards trade Bradley Beal to the Denver Nuggets for Michael Porter Jr., Bull Bull, Gary Harris, and two future first-round picks. Let's say 2021 and 2023. I think that's a fair deal, especially with the emergence of Porter and what he showed in the bubble. I think the Wizards would do that with Porter as the centerpiece of the deal. Bull Bull's intriguing. Gary Harris, I think they can flip again. And then two firsts. I think that's very fair for an underrated star player in Bradley Beal. And then Beal would then pair up with Jamal Murray and Nikola Jokic. And that would be an awesome big three. All right, the Chicago Bulls trade Zach Levine to the San Antonio Spurs for Rudy Gay, Derek White, with a 2021 pick swap. Um, I could see a world where Zach Levine gets traded to the Spurs and he becomes a different player. I've seen a lot of players become different players on the San Antonio Spurs. I think that Greg Popovich would change Zach Levine. He wouldn't make him his go-to guy. Um, Derek White is obviously a good player. Rudy Gay is a veteran. And then the pick swap makes sense. So the Bulls are my 24th team. So the Bulls would have, in theory now, Cody White, Derek Wright, or blah. Kobe White, Derek White. Rudy Gay, Laurie Markinen, Blake Griffin, and Wendell Carter Jr. Maybe Gay comes off the bench. Um, so that's six guys. So somebody's going to be unhappy. Maybe they trade Markinen. Maybe Markinen's thrown into the Spurs deal. You know what? I kind of like the idea of marketing in this deal. And then you have Blake and Wendell Carter Jr. And then Gay, Derek White, and Kobe White. So yeah, you know what I'm going to do? Screw it. I'm putting Laurie Marketing in the Spurs trade. Or should I? I'm debating on pulling the trigger on it. Actually, no, that wouldn't make sense. I'm not going to do it. Looks like somebody's going to come off the bench for the Chicago Bulls. Maybe it's Derek White. Maybe it's Rudy Gay. But now they have a big man dilemma. What do they do with Carter? Or... Uh, marketed. I'll figure that out as, as this goes on. I'm going to say that they trade one of those guys. And it's probably going to be marketed. Number 23, the Atlanta Hawks. I have them trading John Collins and the sixth overall pick to the Sacramento Kings for Buddy Heald and the 12th pick. All right, John Collins, his name's been in the rumor mill way too much, so I think he gets dealt. And to me, I always thought there was a mistake as long as you got something better back. 
In this case, they get something better back, and that something better is Buddy Heald. A wing player that can just flat out shoot. Buddy Heald and Trey Young as your backcourt is awesome. Clint Capella is your center. And then you have DeAndre Hunter and Kevin Horder. And one of those guys can be a small ball four for you. And that's a nice starting five for the Hawks. And then maybe they bring in a power forward veteran to come off the bench like Paul Millsap or something to help him. Number 22, the Sacramento Kings. I have them re-signing Bogdan Bogdanovich. Um, I think that'd be a great move for them. I already have them training Buddy Hill, so it only makes sense that they re-sign Bogdan Bogdanovich. Um, number 21, the San Antonio Spurs. I have them signing Christian Wood. It's a very bold prediction. And it makes sense because I have them dealing Yaka Pertle for C.D. Osmond. And now the speculation is going to grow. Oh, LaMarcus at center. They're clearly going at their center. And that's under Christian Wood. Um, I think that they pay him proper money and he becomes their starting center. And their starting lineup um, would be C.D. Osmond, Christian Wood, um, Zach Levine, and then DeRozan and Aldridge. And now the question would be like DeJounte Murray. Or you have Zach Levine come off the bench. Or you do small ball, start both guards. And then um, DeRozan, Aldridge, and Wood. And then you have C.D. Osmond come off the bench like he did for the Cavaliers earlier in his career. And that's the most logical thing for San Antonio. Here's a fun one, guys. Number 20, the Phoenix Suns. My prediction. The Phoenix Suns trade R Ricky Rubio to the Dallas Mavericks. And Kelly Oubre and the 10th pick and the 2022 first-round pick, too. The Portland Trailblazers for C.J. McCollum. And the Dallas Mavericks also get a Blazers second round pick. So the Phoenix Suns are dying for a big name to go with Devin Booker. C.J. McCollum would be perfect. C.J. doesn't need the ball. He plays the two guard. And then Devin Booker you have as your point guard. You officially make him as your point guard. And then you have DeAndre Ayton, Mikael Bridges, you can have the play, the three. And now the question is, what do you do with power forward? Maybe they sign Serge Ibaka. Maybe they sign a veteran power forward um, in that spot to go with DeAndre Ayton in their front court. Number 19, the Portland Trailblazers. My prediction for them is they sign Malik Beasley and the Timberwolves don't match. So Beasley, I have them, I have him being like either a bench player or that starter for them. So now in theory, um, barring more predictions for the Blazers, which there probably is, which I don't remember, Willard, Oubre, Beasley, um, the big guy, um, Jurkic, who's very good. Maybe they keep Zach Collins around. But yeah, I have them trading McCollum to the Suns. That's bold. Number 18, the Orlando Magic acquires... Andre Drummond from the Cleveland Cavaliers for Mo Bamba in the second round pick. So the Cavs take a shot at Mo Bamba to be like a backup, maybe to start a little bit if um, Jakob Pertl doesn't really pan out. But more likely a backup center because that's, in my opinion, what he is. And then a second. 
Here's a ballsy prediction, guys. 17. The Memphis Grizzlies. I have them trading Jonas Valanciunas and two first-round picks, one in 2021, one in 2023, to the Utah Jazz for Rudy Gobert. Everyone and their brother thinks that the Utah Jazz will trade Rudy Gobert. Um, I didn't think so at first, but I got talked into it. Um, I think that Rudy and Mitchell, um, the Jazz just can't keep both around. I know that they made up after the whole COVID scare and everything. So, but the bottom line is that I don't think the Jazz want to pay him. I know everyone's going to point to the, him getting coronavirus and say that's why they traded him. But the reality is that I don't think the Jazz want to pay him. And in return, they get Jonas Valanciunas, who's a really good starting center, and two first-round picks. And I think that's enough for um, one of the best defensive players in the NBA, and Rudy Gobert. And then now for Memphis, you have Gobert, Jaron Jackson Jr., and John Morant. And then now the question is, what do you do with the wings? And now that suddenly becomes an intriguing team for 2020-21. Number 16, the Oklahoma City Thunder. I have them trading Chris Paul to the Milwaukee Bucks for Eric Bledsoe and a future pick swap. Um, So the Thunder get Bledsoe, pick swap. And the reason why there's a pick swap in there is because I think the Thunder want picks back for Chris Paul. So instead... I have a pick swap in there. I think Chris Paul wants to go somewhere that he has a chance to win, and that is Milwaukee. And Eric Bledsoe has been a playoff train wreck for the Milwaukee Bucks over the last couple of years, so they trade him. I almost pulled the trigger with Middleton in this deal, but um, it would make more sense if it was Eric Bledsoe due to the fact that um, he plays the same position. And now the Thunder get Bledsoe, and they start a little bit more of their rebuild, which was what they were supposed to do. And then now it's Chris Paul, Giannis, and Chris Middleton and Brooke Lopez. And I guess Wesley Matthews, if they bring him back, would be like your starting five for the box. Or Dante DiVincenzo. He's really good. Number 15, the New Orleans Pelicans. My prediction for them is that they gave Brandon Ingram the max. Um... Brandon Ingram had a breakout year this past year. He won the most improved player. Um, I think being away from the Lakers situation, being away from LeBron really helped them and being in a small market. So I'm going to say that the Pelicans don't blink whenever free agency begins. They gave him that coveted max contract. Number 14, the Indiana Pacers. Oh boy, here we go. The Pacers trade Victor Oladipo to the Brooklyn Nets in a three-team trade. Jared Allen to the Toronto Raptors, Spencer Dinwiddie, and the 19th pick and the 29th pick to the Indiana Pacers. So each the the, Nets and the Raptors give first-round picks to Indiana for their respective players. Um, I'm going to say Allen for 29 straight up is fair, but I expand this to a bigger trade. The Nets don't need that pick. Indiana would because... Two firsts and Dinwiddie, I think, is fair for Oladipo for now, considering the situation. Um, I think that Oladipo is a better player than people are giving credit for because he's been um, coming off that injury. So the Nets get that third start to go with Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving. Karis LeVert's still on the team, so he plays small forward. So you have two great wings. You have Durant and Irving, and then now you have um, DeAndre Jordan at the five. So that is a really good starting five. Number 13, the Dallas Mavericks. My prediction for them is that they signed Danilo Gallinari. They need a, a combo forward. Um, to me, Chris Stapps Porzingis is a center. He's not a power forward. He should be playing at center. Um, but I don't think Dallas wants to do that. 
you know, but you never know. Um, so now they would have, in theory, um, Doncic, Hardaway, Gallinari, Porzingis, and then X. But yeah, I think the Mavericks are a couple moves away from really be- becoming like an NBA championship contender. But I'm going to say they signed Daniel Gallinari because I think they need shooting other than their big two. Brooklyn Nets, my prediction is that they signed Marcus Morris. Um, I think that Marcus Morris would help them off the bench. He's not a starting player. To me, he's a bench guy. Um, he was not that great with the Clippers. Um, they gave up a first for him. But I think he'd be really good on Brooklyn as a, a bench player. And that could swing game, swing games. Number 11, the Houston Rockets. My prediction for them is that they signed Davies Bertans. Um, I think that would be a really good signing for them. They need a big guy. I think they made that mistake last year by going strictly small ball. But here they still are small ball. But Bertans to me is a really good big man that can shoot and it will just fit the Rockets mold. Number 10, the Toronto Raptors. My prediction for them is that they re-sign Serge Ibaka and Fred Van Vliet. Um, I think that this is a team that um, wants to bring it back one more time. A little bit, even Marcus Soule's a free agent, um, and Kyle Lowry's still around. But maybe they discover something here, and they I have them training for Jared Allen. So they'll be Jared Allen, Serge Ibaka, the two guards, and Pascal Siakam, and that's a good starting five. Number nine, the Boston Celtics. Here's a good one, guys. The Boston Celtics trade Gordon Hayward and the 14th pick to the Oklahoma City Thunder for Steven Adams. This trade, I think, makes a lot of sense. The Celtics need a big guy. Um, They want to get rid of Gordon Hayward. A lot of people in Boston are calling him the jinx because he gets injured so much. He got injured in the first game of the season. In 2018, he got hurt in the playoffs last year. It just hasn't been that as great as a fit as the Celtics would have liked. You know that Hayward wanted to go to Boston so bad just to be with Brad Stevens, his ex-coach in college, and now his current coach with the Celtics. But the Celtics need a big guy. They don't um, really need Gordon Hayward. And now their lineup would be Kemba Walker, Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, Steven Adams, and then get a power forward in there. I think Serge Ibaka, that would be another great fit for him. Number eight, the Golden State Warriors. We'll trade the number two pick in the draft and Andrew Wiggins to the Orlando Magic for Nikola Vucevic, Evan Fournier, and the 15th pick. Um, Warriors reshaped their roster. Now you got Curry and Thompson, Fournier, Draymond Green, and Nikola Vucevic. I think they badly want to dump the Draymond contract. But I don't know who takes it. Does Atlanta take it? And they have him and Capella? So the Hawks can get a big name in there? That would be interesting. But you never know. But I don't think they'll trade Draymond yet. Although I think they want to badly. And I just named off the Warriors team. And then uh, Pascal off the bench. And all those guys from last year off the bench. And for Orlando, um, you have Andre Drummond, Andrew Wiggins. Let's And I have them getting the second pick here. So let's say they take LaMelo Ball. Then you have Lamella Ball and Markel Fultz in your backcourt. That's intriguing. And then Wiggins. Jonathan Isaac out all next year. He's your power forward of the future. And then you have Andre Drummond. Number seven is the Utah Jazz. I have them trading Mike Conley, who's on an expiring contract, to the Miami Heat in a three-team trade with the Orlando Magic. And the Jazz get back in return, Aaron Gordon. And I have Kelly Olynyk and the 2023 first to Orlando. 
So, Olenek to Orlando, he would be their power forward. So, it would be Olenek and Drummond, and then Wiggins, and then LaMelo Ball, and Andrew Wiggins. So, that team pretty much brand spanking new, other than Fultz. And then, you have Conley going to the Heat on an expiring contract, and that's what the Heat would want. Um, and I'm going to say that, um, the Heat starting lineup would be Conley, Tyler Harrow, Duncan Robinson, or Kendrick Nunn, pick your poison, Bam, And Jimmy Butler. So, um, in theory, they would need a power forward, but maybe they go small. And it'd be interesting because, um, obviously, they badly want Giannis in 2021. So, Um, you know that they really don't want any, um, uh, big contracts here. So, yeah, Duncan Robinson, Jimmy Butler, Mike Conley, Tyler Harrow, and, bam, small ball. And Jimmy Butler, I've seen guard some power forwards before. I've seen him guard LeBron, seen him guard Durant. And I think he'd be completely up for that. And then for Utah, um, your lineup now moves Donovan Mitchell to point guard. I have them getting Jonas Valanciunas in that fake Gobert trade that I predicted. And then Aaron Gordon. And then... You have Joe Ingles and um, Brian Bogdanovich. That's a really good starting five. So it's going to be very interesting to see uh, what happens with those three teams, obviously, and that'd be a fun trade. My bold prediction for the 76ers is that they sign Joe Harris. It's a very ballsy call here, and um, that would have to take them dumping one of those onious contracts, and maybe once I get to miscellaneous, I'll come up with a team that acquires one of their bad contracts. So I'm going to say they signed Joe Harris, and then their starting lineup would be Ben Simmons, Joe Harris, Tobias Harris, Joel Embiid, and either Matthias Thibel or Josh Richardson. Number five, the Miami Heat. My bold prediction for the Heat is that they give Bam Adebayo the max. Abadeo. Um, he did really deserves it. Um, I really think he deserves it, and he's really up this game in the level. He's one of the more improved players in the NBA, and I think that despite their want and need. Well, they feel need, but I think more want to save cap space for Giannis. I think they also want to extend um, their um, franchise center and Bam Abadeo. 
Number four, the Denver Nuggets. My prediction for them is that they re-sign Jeremy Grant. Um, Jeremy Grant's a good player for them. Um, good role player. Can start, can come off the bench. And now with Beal there, um, they have a, a weird power forward hole because I have Porter in the trade. So my projected lineup for them would be Murray and Beal, Jeremy Grant, Will Barton, and um, obviously Jokic. So then you do small ball there and play Grant at the four and Barton at the three. And then obviously Beal and um, uh, Murray. So that's going to be interesting to see what they do with Jeremy Grant. Um, Number three, the Milwaukee Bucks. My bold prediction for them, I have them trading for Chris Paul. I think Carmelo Anthony is a free agent that's going to sign there if that's the case. So Melo to the Bucks. I can see Melo being in a bench role, although I think he wants to start. And he proved last year that he still has it after look, looking washed up with the Houston Rockets. And he's going to try playing with Chris Paul again. Number two, the Los Angeles Clippers. My prediction for them is that they trade Lou Williams and a second to the Blazers for Zach Collins. Um, Clippers need a big guy. I think they lose Montrezl Harrell and um, I'm going to say the Clippers um, acquired Zach Collins for Lou Williams in a second. So now the Blazers would have um, Jurkic. Um, Dame, Kelly Oubre, Lou Williams, and then X. We really don't know who um, they would start at the four. Maybe they sign Markeith Morris to help them. We'll see. Um, and number one, if there wasn't any doubt, the Los Angeles Lakers. And my prediction is just the most obvious prediction on the board. It's a lock. They're going to re-sign Anthony Davis to the max. Um, they traded all those picks for him. And those young players for him as well. And they just won the title. And I think that him and LeBron are a great pairing together. And I think that they'll give him a max contract whether it's two years to be even with LeBron on his deal or four years to lock him up long term. And now some miscellaneous stuff. Um, I'm going to say that the Sixers dump Al Horford on the Portland. So he would be now their starting power forward. And Philly also throws in a future first round pick to... Um, sweeten the deal a little bit. Um, so there's that. Um, I think that Atlanta signs Tristan Thompson or Another big guy to go with Capella. But Thompson wouldn't make sense because he's a center. They need a power forward. That would have been the good Horford dump team to put Horford back on his old team. But I'm going to say that they don't do that. And I'm going to say that Horford... Goes to Portland. And I'm going to say that the free agent big guy that signs with the Hawks and will end up being their starting power forward will be Montrezl Harrell. And I'm going to say that Harrell will be playing at the four, even though he's a, he's a center. I can see them going with two bigs with him and uh, Clint Capella. And Derek Favors is somebody that I can see um, going to Atlanta. Marcus Soul's interesting. Um, 
I wonder where he will land. I think that the Lakers will bring back Dwight Howard. He was very impactful for them. I won't be shocked if them or the Clippers sign Marcus Saul. Marcus Saul goes for the ring. And I think another team that can use him, and that's and this is a, my prediction. I think he signs with the Houston Rockets. And I think they go back to being a normal basketball team, and their starting five will be Gasol, Davies, Bertans, Harden, Westbrook, and Eric Gordon. Or Robert Covington, and then you have Gordon as your sixth man. So there you have it um, for that. Um, now looking at the free agent list, obviously it's Davis and Ingram, who we talked about. Throws, and I think stays with the Spurs. He opts in. Drummond I have dealt. Hayward I have dealt. Gallinari I have going to Dallas. Mike Conley I have the, him uh, opting in. And getting traded to the Heat. Van Vliet back to the Raptors. Von Trezel Harrell I have to Atlanta. Although him on um, Dallas with Porzingis would be fun. I have Bertans to Houston. Christian Wood to San Antonio. Malik Beasley to Portland. Serge Ibaka back to the Raptors. Bogdan Bogdanovich back to Sacramento. Jordan Clarkson's fun. Um... I wonder where he will land. He'll help somebody as a impact um, third guard off the bench. Goran Dragic, I initially had him going back to the Heat, but I don't know where he'll land. Maybe he goes to the Clippers and replaces Lou Williams. I could see something like that. And... I'm going to say that um, Aaron Bain signs with Dallas. So that's the big guy they sign. Maybe a two-year deal with the not out after the first year. And then their lineup could be Porzingis and Baines. And then Doncic, Gallinari, and Hardaway. But I think they're going to try to dump Hardaway onto somebody, but... Um, I just couldn't figure out what team that is yet. Derek Favors is an interesting free agent. I'm going to say that he signs with the Boston Celtics and becomes their power forward. So now they're going to have a new look lineup. Steven Adams, Derek Favors as your two big guys. Um, and then obviously their big three, Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, and Kemba Walker. So that's a really good starting five. Um, Fournier, I have opting in and going, getting dealt to the Warriors. Otto Porter Jr., I have opting in and getting traded, um, to, um, Detroit. I have Melo going to the Bucks, And then Dragic is interesting. Where can I see him going? I think he wants to win. I'm trying to think of like who has an opening and a starting spot. Maybe Dallas does deal Hardaway somewhere and and uh, Dragic ends up there. That'd be kind of fun. And Hardaway, by the way, is an option. I think he opts in. I have Joe Harris being the surprise player, signing with the Philly 76ers. So this would be the second offseason in a row where Philadelphia makes a surprise signing. And I said I had Al Horford dumped up to Portland. Marcus Morris, I think, signs with Brooklyn. I made that prediction already. Paul Millsap's interesting. I could see him going ring chasing. I could see him going to Golden State and accepting like a bench roll there or the Clippers. And I'm going to say Millsap goes to the Clippers as a bench guy. And then Dwight I have going back to the Lakers. Olenek I have opting in and getting traded to the Magic. And then Tristan Thompson I could see going to the Hawks or another team that needs a big. I could see him going to Golden State. But I have Vucevic going there. 
But I'm going to say Tristan Thompson ends up in a bench roll somewhere. That's a good team. Boogie Cousins is interesting. I think that he's a player that could end up on a random team and helping them. I could see him going to a rebuilding team only to just get traded hoping for an injury or something to get traded to a good team. Maybe Boogie goes to Oklahoma City and replaces Steven Adams there. That That's a good call. I'm going to say that Boogie ends up on Oklahoma City to try to revalue himself a la Chris Paul this past year. Although Chris Paul was a trade rather than a signing. I said Isaiah Thomas to the New York Knicks in a similar scenario as Boogie Cousins to like rebuild the value kind of a thing. I think Austin Rivers opts in and returns to the Rockets. Ennis Canner opts in and returns to Boston. I could see Jeff Teague being a backup point guard somewhere. Hassan Whiteside I could see. That could be somebody that can help one of these teams that need bigs. Maybe he goes back to the Blazers for all we know. I could see him going back there to be a backup. Um, That's a candidate to go to Dallas in my mind. And then Bobby Portis I think opts in and then the Knicks try to dump him. Then Jakob Pertl, I talked about earlier. I'm going to say that that's a sign-in trade for the Cavaliers. And there's a lot of other random role players here. Um, Jay Crowder, Nerlens Noel, DJ Augustine, Mason Plumlee, Nick Batum. He's opting in. That's a bad contract. Reggie, Reggie Jackson, Kyle Korver, Michael Kidd, Gilchrist, and Avery Bradley. I'm going to say Bradley opts in and returns to the Lakers. And then some interesting guys, which Slam Online calls the mystery value tier. Rodney Hood, Kenrick Williams, restricted. Josh Jackson, Javon Carter, restricted. Juan Hernan Gomez, restricted. Mario Hazonia, player option. Chris Boucher, restricted. Ronda Ellis Jefferson, Alonzo Trier, and Chandler Parsons. So there you have it for NBA offseason predictions. Now I'm going to do my best bet of the day brought to you by FanDuel. Um, I'm going to go with the under in the Arkansas State Appalachian State game. I think even 38-30 App State, and that's an under. 68 total points gets me this under. So... I think that this is lower than the total suggests. And I think that the game in the Sun Belt being played tonight goes under 68.5. And And I do think it's going to be a closer game than people expect. So that's it for the show today. I'll be back tomorrow recapping the NFL and college football and looking ahead to the weekend and all that fun stuff. We'll get back in the NASCAR as their playoffs are heating up as well. We'll preview and pick the races and any other news that happens in the world of sports. I'll have for you as well as my fat five picks of the weekend and my best bet for tomorrow. Have a good day, everybody.